Hello, Rest of Aquarium X Pets here. I have four different types of Cubarius Marina. On the top left here, I have Cubarius Marina Anemone. And then on the top right, I have Cubarius Marina Glacier. On the bottom right, I have Cubarius Marina Papaya. And on the bottom left, I have Cubarius Marina Wild Type. I'm going to give you a little bit more information about all of these and a closer look at each one and then we're going to do a rehousing of one of these types here. So let's take a closer look at Cubarius marina wild type. I've done a species profile of Cubarius marina so if you want to uh, check that out you can do that up here in the corner after you're done watching this video. One really fun thing about the wild type is that you can see the orange uropods. Many individuals, not all, but many individuals have those orange uropods. You can see on that specimen in the middle of the screen. It's now taking off. Let's see if these other specimens, yep, that largest specimen has it. This other one does too. So that's kind of fun. Um, these have been in the hobby quite a while, uh, and there are some different uh, morphs of them. And among those morphs, of course, is this one, Cubaris marina papaya. You'll sometimes see this one labeled Cubaris species papaya, but that is incorrect. It is well known that these are descended directly from Cubaris marina wild type stock, Cubaris marina papaya, and that is how they should be labeled. Not only do they have this kind of pinkish tinge to them, but you can see that their eyes are darker than the rest of their body. It's quite visible in all of these specimens. Um, these are also slightly darker in appearance than Cubaris marina glacier. The eyes look very different, but so does the, the body. Let's let's uh, so does the body. Let's compare them side by side a little bit. You can see that they look kind of similar, but they have that more dark pinkish tinge to them. Not a dark, but darker than the glacier. And let's look at the glacier closely and we'll notice that the glacier does not have darker eyes. When you look at them even fairly closely like this, it almost seems like they don't have eyes at all. And they do have eyes, but the eyes lack pigment, and so they're very difficult to see. With enough magnification, you can see the eyes, but it is uh, quite evident that there's something different from Cubaris marina papaya. An interesting thing is these are said to have been collected from wild stock that already had this phenotype. That's pretty interesting. But they are thought to be Cubaris marina, just particular form of them. I think they were collected in the Philippines, if I remember correctly. Very, very interesting. You can see this one's about to molt. Now any pigment you see, and there isn't much, but what pigment you see is probably a result of carotenoids or other natural color enhancers in their food. And that dark uh, line down the back is just an artifact of you seeing inside of them. You may be seeing partly just food in their digestive tract, and you may also partly be seeing their circulatory system uh, and just there's the kind of the, the way the light reflects and is visible through them in certain situations. But that's not pigment that they naturally express. So, very interesting form. And now let's take a look at Cubaris marina anemone. Now this one is quite variable. The wild type's fairly variable too. But you can see there are specimens of different colors here. There's a dark one over sort of towards the left, and there are various expressions of orange. There's even one with kind of a, a fleck on one of its body segments of dark coloration. That used to be more common, and the markings used to be larger, the dark markings used to be larger in my colony. But now I'm getting relatively few of them. As you can see, most of them are pretty close to solid orange, except for the color a few that don't seem to be orange at all. But there are very few that have both the orange and the wild type expressed 
on the same individual. Just really that individual we saw a moment ago and now I can't find. There it is. That one has a little bit uh, also in the terminal region on the, the pleon. Uh, you can see a little bit too. Which is really interesting. Um, there are other forms of Cubaris marina. These are only the types that I happen to have. But very interesting ice bud, fairly easy to keep. And once again, if you want to check out my care guide on this species, you can do so at the link that I provided. Now, let's rehouse these Cubaris marina anemone. The substrate in here is the BioLives Premium Bioactive Substrate. I purchased some other substrate and they sent me a bag or two of the Premium Bioactive Substrate free so I could try it out with some isopods. And I also got some Bioactive Starter, this bacterial and fungal culture that you you add to your substrate to help jump start it. So I added some of that. And then I put some leaf litter and of course some, some cork bark hides and a little bit of cuddle bone and a, a shell dish and whatnot. And the leaf litter is nice and moist and rotting and smelly. I have it in my, I pulled it out of my bucket for which uh, I keep for that very purpose so that I can get the leaves all nice and decomposed the way the isopods like it. And now I'm going to let them go into this enclosure. So I'll just zoom in just a little bit. We'll let some of them go into here. See how they do. Over time, they can be tricky to get out of the uh, container. Where did I put my, my paintbrush? I have a little paintbrush here. There it is. Um, with soft bristles that helps me to kind of brush them out. There we go. Now, they're off. In a few months, I'll see if we can do an update on this uh, enclosure and see how they're doing. Thanks. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams and shorts during the week as well. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video. And now, let's acknowledge our patrons.